It's a pleasure to speak with musicians, play of, in, of instruments, singers, and I am very excited this evening to speak with Ijo, some of the members of the band, also described as a jazz fusion band. I've also seen members describe it as an experiment, but Janine Ruiz, Tamba Gwindi, Dareem Chandler, and Jeremy McIntosh are in attendance, so we say hello and good evening to you. Good Hi. Good evening. <laughs> Now, Janine, I'm going to start off with you, Rose Amongst the Thorns. Give me a little overview of the band and what it is about. So, Ijo is a collective of musicians of different genres and backgrounds and personalities. Mm -hmm. And we got together in this very band over here, just the jam. And the energy was so good that we decided to make it an official collective with original music. No. What has the routine been like during the during the pandemic? I'll start off. I'll start off going from my left to right. So, Dareem, thanks. How has it been for you? Uh, the pandemic has been rough. Uh, during the pandemic, we as musicians are all alive because it's through con congregation. So, not being able to congregate and fellowship with not just other musicians, but with audience members and things like that, it's rough. Yeah. It has been. To be rough and stubborn, you know, but we find joy and peace in, in, in you know, little projects that we, you know, are working on, and we actually started releasing some of those projects on Wednesday. Don't vex if I skip it, don't vex if I skip you, Janine, but I'll, I'll ask Tamba the same question, please. Well, it's a common experience, all of us are happy. The fact that we cannot come to as we normally do. But it's also an opportunity, I mean, we, can, we try to face life as a challenging moment, but also opportunities to do things. So this what we're doing right now, we're creating stuff with him, this will experience. And Jeremy? Jeremy, I had a talk, you know, so I'll ask you thanks. Sorry, what was that? So I, I'm asking for the same response from Jeremy, please, his perspective. Oh, um, for me, it was interesting for me because I still had to work. However, um, on the musical front, it, I think with the time, it gave me a lot of space to reevaluate certain things musically. And even myself as an individual, it gave me time to work on, you know, other projects, my own projects, um, and also just evaluate myself as a musician and my next step forward because this was a real eye opener. We, I don't think we are expecting anything like this at all to just be stagnant, to just be on pause for this period of time. And if this is like a lot of my my family members here, um, if this is a a way of income and a, a main source of income, then there's a lot of thinking that needs to go into the process again. So for me, it was a, a real incubation thinking period. Okay. Now, Janine, I saw you still creating content and um, posting it to different different platforms. Uh, was it harder to do that, or was it, or was this almost a, a method of coping? What take me through that? Um, I think because of our wonderful media, people, they made it very easy for us to actually meet up and. Instead of meeting up as a full band, it was like three of us, four of us, and different combinations. And we, yeah. we created a project called Video Life. And as the room said, we started releasing music one by one. This one too, one here, and that has honestly given me that, that feeling of purpose because we've been home for a good few months not doing anything yeah. together. So it's great to come back out and it's great to see the reaction of this new music too. It wasn't all that easy. I, I think I think it was a bit um a give and take because of not having all the family members here. Yeah, sure. um, following, yeah, yeah. following the, the COVID stipulations. So it wasn't that easy, but we worked with what we had and we made it a thing. Now speaking of a thing, um Many times people think about musicians and all they think of is the different genres, uh, choker, chutney, jazz, this, that, the other. But at the same time, take us down the rabbit hole of musical influence. And I ask, I'll start off with you, please, Janine, because I know 
you did uh you did, you worked extensively on the soundtrack for a feature film Cutlass. Where right. else does music go as opposed to just saying, okay, well, we're looking at people on stage or artists on stage? Um, <laughs> so I listen to a lot of different types of music, um, a lot of film, as you mentioned, a lot of black women. I think because of how we grew up, this kind of mix up with different cultures and stuff, it's very easy to listen to musicians and music abroad. You know me, one of my favorites from Japan. Michelle Canelo from Cuba. And honestly, that's what we bring to this band we do here. We just bring all the different influences. And our Trinidadian roots too. And we have so many different rhythms and samples, like all of the kings of rhythm. Very right. so right. And um, all the music that we actually compose is just it's Trinidadian music. A lot of people, when they hear our music, they think it's a foreign band. It's just out of the home. It's something that's not. Only so far, it's not only jazz, it's Trinidadian music. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned Tamba, and I want to bring Tamba on, or Uncle Gwindi a little more into the conversation <laughs> because one of the one of the one of the songs on the album that you all are dealing with is Black Rose, and I saw a bit of the explanation for that. So I want you to give me that explanation again, please, Uncle Gwindi, in the context of many of the things that we're going through, and including Black the Black Lives Matter movement. It, it goes to show that regardless of the season, the issue of being black in this universe is something that has to be addressed in one media or the other. Black Rose is just a tribute to the black woman. That's it, basically. Now, looking at the fact that you said it started off being a piano piece, but when you brought it to the group, it changed. It brings me to ask the question, you have so many pockets of influences and places and styles. How do you create music as the collective? Because each of you do your things individually, but in terms of saying, okay, when we're dealing with Ijo, what gets precedence? What is the process? You go any, many, many more, and somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I think, I think, uh, we as a unit, we have a level of trust with each other, especially with our ideas. And as you mentioned, like all of us have individual things. Janine is the musical director for Nyla, um, Uncle Gwindy, Toddy Wood, Andre Tanker, and all those guys. Jeremy McIntosh was actually one of the guys who created the Fusion with us. So all of us, like, involved in the music industry. The soca industry to a very great extent, but when mm -hmm. we come together as a collective, we have the opportunity to experiment and do things musically. We won't get the opportunity to do on the average mainstream stage. So, just coming together with that openness and that mindset kind of gives us the ability to be so free and comfortable with each other. Yeah. We just try and experiment different things, see what songs good, see what. And we want to continue speaking about that mindset and that openness and some of the opportunities when we come back from this break. So stay with us. Sure. JJ and Friends Grand July Sale. Get 25% off our JTAB Junior Suite for children ages 2 to 5 in preschool and receive a free Amazon Kindle Fire preloaded with our educational apps, plus workbooks, charts, flashcards, board games, and checklists. Learn to read and eradicate poverty. Learn to read and eradicate crime. Take that investment in the education and buy them all the jewelry and the toys later on, but ensure that you get JJ and Friends. It is really, really good. It's very informative, very educational, and you won't forget it. You are setting the future for your children. It has changed my life. It has changed the life of my, my two sons. She graduated as class valedictorian. I would advise anybody, if it's your last money in the bank, spend it. This is our future for your children. Call 800 Read Now. Tournament Experience is a weekly presentation of the Montrose New Testament Church of God. 
It is Central Trinidad's fastest growing Pentecostal church. Here, the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified and the congregation edified. Pastor B.A. Hammond has faithfully served this church for more than four decades. His weekly messages are powerful and anointed. Why not visit us and experience the difference in our worship services? Our church is committed to building your faith, your family, and your future. Welcome back. We are speaking with members of Ejo, the collective, and we're very happy to do so. Janine Ruiz, Tamba Gwindi, Dareem Chandler, and Jeremy McIntosh are representing at this point in time. When Just before we went to the break, we were talking about what individuals bring to the table. And something I want to start off with you, please, Janine, and ask, how do interactions with each other change and cause you all to grow? And I give some context of that because during the same Black Rose, I saw Uncle Gwindy asking Dareem to play something a certain way. Or say, okay, using stick with this hand, open hand on the other one. So what are some other instances of that? Um, because of our different backgrounds, I think we help each other each time. So mm -hmm. Jason will have some speaking very like um speaking very passionate and accompanying notes and stuff on every single time we meet up we basically learn something right before we started the interview these guys were playing some new rhythm we were all trying to drop in one like it's just all we don't know next year I think everybody here we respect each other um and just in terms of safe creative space there isn't any egos and it's just constantly learning I may say to my of course Jeremy may be like whoa what was that and like he's with them so healthy challenges just healthy challenges mm -hmm. Do, where do egos come in? Is that a part of the dialogue with you all? Because um, the same way somebody might helping might help someone and say, no, well, I don't think you should do it like that. Do it like this instead. Where, where what do clashes look like? Um, I think with us, we we don't have clashes like that. We, as we say, we are all family. We yeah. we were all friends before we got together as egos. You know, we all used to challenge each other and we look for each other. So, in terms of clashes, no, we, we pretty want to try, you know, Janine would suggest something and we all may think, yo, that is not a good idea. But we still willing to try it just to see how it sounds. Mm -hmm. And then we would make a collective decision. Yes, that works. No, it doesn't. You know? I think every facet of the music has its own space. So, I think we're very open. To, to expressing certain things and if it doesn't work like you said we probably shelter it or try something else but because it's such a well oil machine um everybody brings something to the table very significantly and it just really works like clashes in terms of disagreements very very seldom happen you know we're very open and teachable as well i guess that's one of yeah, i think point. i think we probably disagree more than the other aspects I guess the aspect we agree on the most is music. You know what I mean? We disagree more in other aspects of life than music. You know what I mean? So if there's so if there is a disagreement, uh, or who, or let me ask it differently, who has the final say? So if you decide in between two songs for the album, who gets that final say or that tiebreaker? I would say our oh. manager. A uh, guy by the name of Ryan, cheat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. friend. We, he, he, in my opinion, has the, the final say, say, but as well as he trusts us so much that he allows us to make, you know, as much, he gives us room to make as much decisions as we need to. Yeah. But when it comes to the crunch time and, and putting pen to people, yeah. he's the guy to be like, all right, this is what we're going to do, this is how we yeah. do it. Okay. What was the response? Ryan, Ryan she is like that. <laughs> what was this response like to the album? And I asked that because I know there was a listening party. So what were what was some what was some of the kinds of feedback that you got when when you had people listen to this production? Oh wow. That the first, the album, I think a lot of the responses were, is this local? 
this is local music, this is a local band. They were re- uh, a lot of people were very surprised that this is local music, and we really try to always have that um, that local um, grassroots cultural sound in our music. Um, not all it would may not sound that way because um, a lot of Caribbean stuff happens as well in music. But a lot of people were like, wow, we never even knew this music was being played in Canada or being created in Canada. It's funny to me, we're not trying to do anything else. We're not trying to sound international. We're not trying to do anything. We're just purely 100% ourselves. And this is what I got from both of us. Not only great music. So that begs the question where can people find the music? Um, they can find it on all streaming platforms, iTunes. Google Play, um, it's everywhere. Amazon Music. We even have on YouTube. Also. We have hard copies as well. CDs, yes. we have albums. Please, Social go. media, uh, yeah. Uh, at EGO Music Official. You can find us on all social media platforms, iTunes, all the streaming platforms. We're everywhere. And I, I want to take the opportunity to say a thank you once again to Mr. Gerard, who, who kind of slipped me uh, far from finished from you, Janine, and oh. kind of had me listening to say, okay, what was this? Who's this? Where's this person from? And he said, you might want to talk to this person, DK. So in terms of, like we're still having those conversations. And that begs the question of what do you think at this point in time is the importance of the artist? And I asked that because I was looking at the video of Tobago and listening to the music and then seeing some visuals and starting to get nostalgic about times pulling sane and going to certain places. Uh, what do you think is the importance of yourself and what it is you do at this point in time? I'll start with you, please, Tambo. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I think the music is the um, you don't ever hear anybody not having a song that they like. That for, for any situation, music is used, but yet the, the, the state of the music is not really taken seriously, especially in our society. It's an interesting thing, but it, there's nothing without music. It doesn't start without music, right? So, so we offer, we bring light, not not bring our own topic or anything like that, but. Inspiring, being inspired to be an artist, to be a musician, to be a creative, to bring light to, to the darkness that is on this planet. Just we are not, where we live, we are not necessarily taking that seriously. And our role is not being that significant. But the role is being regard to what, and we're responding to the call that we have to, to play this role. And that's the same. All right, and I think it's a good opportunity for us to get those comments from the other three of you, please, because we have about 30 seconds each. So we start with Jeremy and we move to Doreen. What was your question? Into the role of the artist at this point in time. Right. Um, our role, basically. Oh, our role. Wow. Um, I agree with Uncle Wendy. It's the same. Our role is to, to specifically bring you to the band, bring you to the music. Um, you are i'm an ingredient and so is everybody else so i believe that's basically what it should be yeah we um we didn't choose to be musicians it was like something we did and yeah. we try to fulfill that purpose by sharing it with everybody yeah. and as Tambo say we, we bring light you know we're here to motivate inspire uplift you know. and i even add by saying like as I said, Janine is the musical artist in Nyla. Uncle Gwendy played with, with Andrew Tanka and all those guys. Three Zero Rhythm. So, like, all these guys here are responsible for making all the mainstream music or the music the average listener would jump up to in effect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I say not to say uh, Trinidad doesn't have a strong jazz culture, but we are the same guys who play on the soccer industry. You know what I mean? So, I'm saying not to say. You know, be up, be open, uh, check each out, listen to it with an open mind, and uh, you know, just enjoy and we hope we can inspire and, and okay. uplift and mo- motivate the people in, in this current time. Yeah. So, we want to thank you for being light and bringing light 
and shedding light on some of what it is you do. So thank you so much, Ijo. And on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Rosta. Thank you for joining us.